Hello? Good afternoon. Our presentation will be about PGP filtering with microchip on the OS. And my name is Roger Mai, I'm from Brazil. I am an electronic telecommunications engineer and internet sex provider since 1995. Um, we Work with trains since 2002 with wireless trains and certified training, American trains since 2007. And I work for Enco Brazil company and I'm a member of the board of directors of LACNI. Our company is located in Brazil, in Sao Paulo state, and is a telecom equipment manufacturer and integrator. And we are microchip training partners since 2007 and microchip distributors and we do also consulting services worldwide. More details about our company can be found in our website. Okay, the, the goal of this presentation is to understand how the BGP filtering works and how uh, BGP filtering can be applied to uh, achieve the desired effects in a multi-connected uh, network with connections to internet checking points, to more than one service providers, etc. And the, the target audience will be ISPs and mediums and small ISPs and telecom companies that are running or planning to run microchip uh, as a border water with BGP. So, our agenda will be divided in two parts. Um, at first, we will give an overview of some BGP essentials and the basics of BGP filtering. And then we go to some uh, cases and we will, we will try to simulate some situations here. We will try to simulate uh, real situations, uh, of course, without using the internet but uh, simulating real uh, periods, etc. I hope it works because uh, I have a long trip, a four day trip to, to get to Brazil. I don't know if the, the rockers get damaged in the trip. Okay, uh, but we will see uh, uh, at first an overview as a single home provider, a single home provider plus a connection to an internet exchange point a uh, multi-home provider with internet exchange point and a multi-home provider with internet exchange point and also providing terms and services. Okay, at first let's go to the B2B essentials and the essentials of filtering. Um, the internet is a collection of IP networks that um, such networks have independent administrations and they are interconnected. Uh, such networks are called usually autonomous system because they have uh, an autonomous administrative um, administration. So, um, a formal definition of an autonomous system is a group of IP networks that uh, are run by one or more network operators with a single clearly defined, defined routing points. In practice, uh, everyone that owns a, a network can be an autonomous system, and uh, if uh, some requirements are met, uh, everyone can ask for the number of resources to be gained, to become an autonomous system and to get the IP addresses. Uh, the IP addresses are controlled in the world. Um, they are not uh, a property, but they are controlled by such organizations. Uh, the central point is at Ipiana, and we have the regional registries. Uh, Africa for Africa, Nika, Asia, are in for North America, uh, and Latin, Latin, Latin America, Caribbean, and right for Europe. And there are also some uh, local registries that distribute the number of resources. So, uh, the PGP protocol is the protocol, is the language that uh, 
one day yes, talk to other AS and they exchange route information about IP networks and make all the destination in the internet uh, region. So to deal with the big amount of routes of the internet, uh, BGP should be uh, a very uh, robust protocol, uh, a very reliable protocol and have, have, has to to deal with uh, more than 400,000 routes and uh, DGP is challenging because uh, it's a protocol that should provide some tools to manipulate traffic, to manipulate policies, routing policies and um, even uh, trying to influence others' autonomous system decision. That's the, the challenge of DGP. So, DGP uh, can be considered a vector distance protocol where each autonomous system is like a single router. Uh, no matter how big is the network, the network can have uh, a thousand routers or one router. For PGP, an autonomous system, system is a single, a single hop. The current version of PGP is PGP4 and the RFC is 1771. So BGP works exchanging routing information with some messages that are called NLRI, um, Network Layer which gives information. And such messages have uh, an IP prefix and some attributes associated to that IP prefixes. And to ensure the integrity of the information, BGP uses the TCP protocol on port 179. So to configure BGP, it's very simple. Both administrators have to configure their the sites. And uh, first, a TCP session on port 179 is established. And over the session is established the BGP session itself. And after this, both sites starts to exchange route information in the database of the both sites and you converge when all the, 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 the routes have converged and uh, BGP only um, propagates only, only exchange uh, route information changing information some routes that are new routes or some routes that were withdrawn from the routing table so there are some messages in BGP. Open is the first message. Keep alive are messages that are sent to check if the other side is alive. And update is the most important message that contains information about the routes, about the prefixes. Notification is a message sent when uh, it word happens. And there is an optional message uh, that's called refresh that asks the other side to send the routes again. So, the GP states start to idle, to connect, and then to active, to open send, open confirm, and finally established. For us, there's no reason to, to go get into these details because we want that the, the connection is established. After the connection is established, only keep alive and update messages it, um, are exchanged. So there are other ways to one state jump to another, but doesn't matter for the purpose of our presentation. Okay, um, the update message. The update message has some physical routes and withdrawn routes and have a lot of routes, a lot of network prefixes and attributes associated with that prefixes. The attributes can be well known, well known can be mandatory and discretionary and optional attributes can be transitive and intransitive. So, uh, for the purpose of our presentation, we will deal with such attributes. ASPath that's the AS, AS sequence 
through which a network is reachable. The next hop is the IP address of the next hop router. The community. Community is a numerical value that can be attached to a, a specific route. And local preference that is an attribute to choose a preferred uh, outbound path inside an autonomous system. So, let's understand AS path first. Suppose we have AS 100, 200, 300, and 400, and the network uh, that belongs to AS 100, network 1100 slash 20. Um, this AS we will announce, and in the attribute AS path, there will be the number, the AS number 100. Then AS 200 announces, and in the AS path, AS 200 put its AS number, and then when AS 300 announces, the AS path uh, changes to 300, 200, and 100. And when the announcement arrives here, his AS knows that to reach the network 1100-20, uh, he has three hops through uh, AS 300, 200, and 100. Okay, uh, BGP has a looping prevention system. Uh, BGP looks in the announcements and in case this announcement uh, flows through here and is re-announced to the, the AS that originated the announcement, the BGP will look inside the AS path and if BGP finds his own AS number, he will discard the announcement to avoid Loops. Next to hop. Next to hop is another attribute that is the gateway. In fact, it's the gateway of the network that was announced. When this network is announced here, the next hop is 10111 because it's the, the IP address of the last router. Then, next hop is 10 to 10115 and then to 10119. So, um, next hop effect for eBGP, for external BGP, is the normal behavior is uh, that the, the last router that makes the announcement puts itself as the next hop for that uh, network. So, uh, in our scenarios we will have uh, an IXPs internet exchange points and is a particular situation and next hops change a little bit. Uh, in a IXP, for example, we have a layer 2 segment here and a shared network. In fact, we have usually a slash 23 or a slash 22 network shared with all the assets that participate in the IXP. So, uh, in this case, this AS10 announces this network with this AS path, and then uh, the next hop is 10111. It announces to this AS here, and when this AS re announces the announcement here, he will not change the AS with the next hop. He will change the AS path, or he can omit the AS path, but he will uh, maintain the original uh, game. And this is why, to optimize the forward of PEC. There is no sense to send PEC to here and to here. So in this case, where I shared the media, the, the gateway will be uh, every time the router that makes the original announcement. BGP decides about the best route. Let's take a look on a, how a, a, a router conceptually works. A router has an information base, a router information base, where all the, the data about networks are placed. All static routes. Uh, dynamic routes learned by routing protocols are stored in the routing information base. 
there is a raw processing and uh, there is a algorithm that will process these routes here and after this some routes here will be connected to form the forwarding information base. The forwarding information base is the, uh, that we usually call the routing table or the active routing table. And MicroTable Route OS has a, a good way to, to show uh, such routes because uh, when we see such routes in active, such routes in blue, in fact they are part of the RIB, not the FIB. Okay, uh, so uh, for all situations, the routing table, the effective routing table that will forward packets is the FIB. <coughs> okay, each protocol has its own, its own um, route information base, and BGP has its information base. So, when BGP receives an update message, he will see if next hop is a ritual. If next hop is a ritual, the information will be discarded. If next hop is a ritual, BGP will look inside the, 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 the announcement, inside the update message, if uh, his own AS is present. If it's present, discard information. If it's not present, look at the filters if the route is discarded by a routing filter. If it's not discarded, then BGP will install that route in the routing information base. So, once the route is in the routing information base, BGP will look if there is an identical prefix inside the routing information base. If there is no identical prefix, BGP will change from the real, the RID, to the FID, and install the prefix in the routing table. If there is an identical prefix, BGP will look through a list of criteria that will be decide which one will be installed. So, if no one filter is applied, if BGP is in the full configuration, um, all these parameters here probably will probably no, they will be the default ones, and then the first um, the first thing will be the probably the router ID. The router ID will de will decide which route. So it's a random uh, a random uh, criteria if we do not deal with. <coughs> filters and change some attributes here. So, um, the way that BGP influence uh, the decision is by configuring filters and changing the attributes of the, the routes. And um, here is an, an, an explanation that uh, usually in our trainings uh, some students are confused about virtual place the filters. And this is very important to understand. We cannot, we cannot um, um, think as a router, as a firewall. Uh, we have to think about routes and traffic. Routes and traffic are different. So, if we filter the incoming routes, that routes that came from external world to our router, we will define which routes will install in our feed, in our FID. So, this will influence how we send the traffic. So, incoming routes will influence how we send the traffic. And vice versa. When we announce some routes to the external world, is how the external world will see us. And then, this will influence how will be our downloads. So, incoming filters, influence our uploads and outgoing filters influence our downloads. So um, the filters are located here. Uh, the BGP router routes uh, pass first through input filters before populate the information base and there's the route processing, the 
for uh, information base. And then is the output filter. So PGP never announces the routing information base. No matter how many routes there is in the routing information base, PGP will only announce the routing, the routes effectively selected and active routes. Some routes will be announced to other peers. So, uh, a little bit about the semantics of the filters in Microtech Counter OS. The filters, we have two tabs here. The first one is matchers. Um, the the matchers, uh, we can classify a route by the prefix itself, by prefix length, protocol, routing marks, etc. Here are matchers too, but matchers by PGP attributes. In this tab, we will see an announcement. We will see inside a PGP attribute, and we will see if uh, some PGP um, some PGP attribute is present in this message, and we will classify this this message. And the two last uh, tabs, actions and PGP actions are the actions that we will have with this route. Uh, here is actions like accept the route, like discard the route, like reject the route. And PGP actions are actions intended to modify the internet attributes on a specific route. So, let's go to case studies. A little overview of the case scenarios. Uh, the first one will be a single AS with a single connection. And then this AS will have also a connection to uh, IXP, Internet Extending Point. And then this same AS will have two transistor operators and a uh, connection to IXP. And finally, this AS will have a transistor client and so this AS will be a trans provider. It will provide trans for this final ISP or final customer. Okay? And there's another scenario you will not see with confederation. Uh, it's not enough time to, to see and enough, not enough routers to simulate the situation. So um, let's start first with a single home provider. Um, I try to, to explain the, the situation, the scenario, and we will put the filters to see how things are working. Uh, I think to, to explain theoretical concepts of, about filtering, it's okay, but to explain how the filters are constructed is very boring. So I will try to, to explain and uh, to make things work to get things better. Okay. So, um, in this case, this AS has only <coughs> one single trellis operator. So, before we establish a session with um, a trellis provider, um, this center provider will ask, for, will ask us for some information, like if we, we want a full or partial routing, and which prefixes, we tend to announce if we want a default route, uh, a password, a lot of questions they will send and we will fill a form to establish the, the first PGP sessions. So we are, uh, for, for this presentation, we are assuming that uh, our trans provider is sending to us a full routing and we are announcing the prefix 11.11.0.0 and our peer will be established with a direct connect interface. In fact, this is not a good practice. Uh, in Budapest Moon, uh, we did a presentation with, uh, about routing security and uh, it's uh, a good practice to establish even the uh, external PGP connections with the uh, loopback interface, but for simplicity we will make the direct connect. And 
Our transit provider does not offer native IPv6 transit and will try to get IPv6 connected to even uh, the destination. So, the first configuration for BGP is very simple. Um, the instance, in the instance, uh, we configure the, the AS number here and router ID. Router ID is not mandatory, it is optional, but uh, it is recommended that we configure a uh, uh, router ID because if we leave in blank, uh, the, the router will take the uh, highest IP address of the of one of the interfaces, and in case of uh, a change of IP address, the router ID can change and can cause some problems. So, uh, it's a good practice to configure the router ID. So, uh, the peer will be uh, the micro configuration will be only the remote address and the remote AS, and that's it. If all the both sides configured correctly, the connection will be established, and we can advertise, we can announce our network in the tab BGP networks. And that's it for a single provider. So, but in this situation, what will we have? We are single provider, we single connect, and we ask for a full routing, and then our provider sends us a full routing. He sends 400,000 of routes will enter in our routing table and will be installed. Do you need this big amount of prefixes? How many routes do you need? Just one. Okay, just the full route. We don't need 4,000. For 400,000 rounds. Okay? So, by default, nothing is filled. And uh, the routing filters can control the ingress of these rounds. So, for this situation, the best route that uh, we can do is to discard the, all the routes received and to configure a default route. Of course, we can ask the transit provider to not send us the, the full ball. But, uh, I don't know here in Europe, but in Brazil, when we have to negotiate with a big operator, it's a very good method. So, if we intend to ask for a full routing next year, we ask for full routing today and start to operate and uh, start the routes with these filters, and it's okay. There's no problem uh, with the for 400,000 routers, uh, routes, but uh, of course it will um, have uh, impact in memory and I have to have a more robust equipment. So, with this filter here applied in Trans 1, we will discard all the routes received and we will configure a um, and then, uh, before. So let's let's see if the things are working here.
I have here some filters that are all disabled. I have some beers, pre-configured, are all disabled too. And I have low lock, only the connected ones. So I will try to ping the internet. Of course, it will not ping. This is one IP that uh, in our scenario is in the internet. So I will establish the peer with first one operator. Okay, the peer is established and then we have connectivity. So but look at our routes. We received this bunch of routes by BGP. Of course, here we have only 100 days because of the simulation, but if we were running a full route, we were going to be receiving uh, 4,000, 400,000. So, uh, in this situation, I will apply the filter to deny, to discard all such blocks. And then the rocks were discarded, and I have no rock to rocks, and I will configure a default rock. and connecting me, it's okay. So, in this case, BGP will only announce our network prefix and for uploading, for uh, uploading traffic, we are using our default role. Okay. For this situation, for this scenario, it's all that we can do only to have this default mode. In fact, we have um, we can have a security concern. Um, if we have a default mode, we will route every pack. Every pack will be forward. Even the packs distinguish to the Bobons network. Well, most networks are networks that are um, a valid IP address. They are not reserved, and, but they are not allocated to any ISP and to any final customer. The Bobons networks, they are in stock of the regional registries. And when it comes to IPv4, because of the IPv4 exhaustion, um, we have few Bobon prefixes. Uh, but I, when it comes to IPv6, we have lots and lots of IPv6 uh, mobile prefix that can be used to uh, launch some type of attacks. So, it's very important that we have uh, mobile policies and uh, the best way to do this is uh, in an automatic way. How can we maintain the stable of bomb prefixes. Uh, these guys here, uh, Ciro, they have, they provide a free announcement of bomb prefixes in a BGP section. session. Uh, so uh, all we have to do is to, make, uh, to write an email to this address here with your address number, and you exchange some emails, and they will give some IP address and establish a BGP session. They will start to send you the, uh, the the network announcements with this attribute here, this community attribute with this number. But we didn't talk about community, okay? Community. Community is an attribute. In fact, community is a number. 
a third bit num number that can be put inside the, the announcement of the routes and is like a mark, like a flag in that route that can be used for a lot of things. BGP, uh, BGP Kubernetes is very, very powerful for doing a lot of things, like to manipulate traffic, like to put uh, a route in black hole, but it depends that someone has um, a policy uh, for using uh, community. All the data operators has it, they, their policies of uh, communities. For example, uh, a big operator can uh, offer to its customers uh, the possibility of, of, of place uh, uh, an IP address in black hole. Uh, today in the morning, in the presentation of Tom Smith, uh, someone asked about UDP attacks. And this is the case that uh, it's very difficult to deal with UDP attacks. Uh, but if your operator uh, has a policy of community, you can announce the IP address that it is attacked, and they will put this IP address in black hole, and uh, the attacks will will not uh, will have no effect to you. So, um, but in our case, it's more simple. Uh, Sim is announcing the bubble prefixes with this community here. And all we have to do is to place a filter looking inside the GP announcement and see if that community is present and take some action with that block. At first, of course, we have to peer with Simu. And this is a multi hop session because Simu is a lot of hops away. So, uh, and then we have to place the filters. We have we place the filters in ingress uh, here with Simu, and we will look in the BGP announcements, and we will see if this BGP community is present, we will accept the route and accept type as black hole. Uh, why accept? Because if we discard, we only have the, 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 the full route. So we have to accept the route and put the route in black hole, and after this, no one, no packet to set destination will be forward, will, they will be discarded. Uh, it's, uh, it's important that we place another road discarding every other routes that eventually uh, Simu sent to us, and uh, we do not want to send routes to Simu too, and then we discard our um, out uh, channel, in out uh, filter, we discard all the routes uh, to complete this setup. Let's see. Let's see how it works. Let's see first, we have only the default route here, okay? And now I will first, I will enable the BGP peering with C. Okay, it's established here. And now we'll see the routes here. Okay, there are new routes here, learned by BGP. Zero is announcing these two networks, for example, here. And let's take a look here. See that in the BGP communities, they are announcing with that community. So, we have, these routes are active. We don't want they are active, we do want they in black hole, and then we will enable this pre-configured filter to see you. <laughs> okay. This, this capital, this capital B here means black hole. So this route is 
this route is in black hole for a city to see. So, no back will be forward for such habits. This can be done with like if six and two four uh, is the same process. This in this this is just uh, how to do the filter. Okay. Okay. And what about IPv6? We are single provider. Our chance provider does not offer IPv6 connection, and we want to. We want to operate with IPv6. So, let's start. Um, I think, is this the address we configured? And the scenario is an IPvC address, and then we have here a 624 tunnel. Um, a 624 tunnel. This 624 tunnel is closed with a Hurricane Electric. Hurricane Electric is a tunnel broker that you can ask for a free transit, IPv6 transit, and you can. Um, Close this 64 tunnel, uh, you for your local address and your remote address, and that's it. Okay? And then we have the BGP session, that's here. Two. Okay, it's established. And then we can be IPv6. We have uh, like a uh, native uh, IPv6 transit via BGP. So let's move on, and we are going to connect now with a NILXP, an internet exchange point, or some people call an app. Network is to the point, or Metropolitan Area Exchange, there are several names. Um, and uh, the IXP is a network solution whose purpose is to connect different ASs to exchange traffic. And an IXP, uh, the interconnection, will provide a better quality because you have low latency. Uh, you will avoid some intermediates and we will lower costs with um, your English, I think the term is multilateral peering agreement. That is an agreement that all the ASs that participate in the, in the IXP, uh, they sign to exchange traffic without charge for this this chart and this is we lower the cost of internet connection and of course the better uh, organization of the network because uh, with an uh, IXP the local traffic keeps local and uh, will pick up the local so uh, basically an IXP is a layer two segment that is connecting the ASs and you can Go to the, the, the main players here with, uh, with uh, good, a good, uh, a good speed, and you also can go to the internet if someone inside the IXP uh, sells bandwidth. So you do not need to have a transit provider and one connection to an IXP. Maybe you have only a physical connection to an ISP, and you can buy. Then we need to internet address inside the IXP. So, in our case, we are here. And uh, after we establish this link here, uh, we will get this situation. When we have a connection uh, through the trust provider and through the IXP provider. In our case, uh, we also will 
have in the IXP native IPv6. Usually the IXP uh, environment has a, a native IPv6 and we will extend here IPv6, but we will have also real wide uh, transit in inside the IXP. So let's configure such things. Here in IP routes, we have only these routes, okay? So, uh, this, this is because we, uh, we discard all the routes. I have to, to disable that filter to receive, to receive again the routes. And IP and and routing filters, routing DDP. I will enable the connection to the IXP, to the IXP exchange, and to the IXP IPv6 transit. So all connections are established, and we have here IP routes. There's a problem, we do not have uh, routes from our transit provider. We are only getting routes from IXP. But this, I think this is a kind of detail here. Because we, um, in fact, we, we did a road to deny all routes, we did receive the roads and uh, we disable that that um, that road, that that filter. The, our transfer provider did not send us the, the, the new rocks. He doesn't know that we disable. So we have to go to the peer. Here and refresh. Then he to send the rocks. Okay? So now it's okay. We have some networks that are now uh, even in the internet extending point and even by um, the IXP. You know that uh, in all situations the IXP won the elections. And why this occurs? In fact, an IXP we have we have uh, uh, the IXP. Usually, there are wrong server in IXP, and uh, the AS number. We closed uh, a session, a PGP session. We established a PGP session with the wrong server, and then uh, the wrong server uh, will not send his AS. He not counts in the AS path. He not set his configuration to not send the his AS. So each AS here we have only one one. From here to here is one AS path, and from here to any other place are more than one hop because we have a chance operator. So uh, this is the reason that it's not necessary that you do some filters. It's usually when you you went to a uh, IXP and people from the IXP say oh, you have to, to to put some filters to prefer the route to the IXP. No, this is natural. Naturally, you prefer these these routes to the internet exchange point. There's no need of any filter. So. But um, let's see this situation here. In fact, the AS that are connected here, they are also usually connected to the internet, maybe to the same transit operator. There are a lot of connections here. 
that we do not see, do not, do not know about these connections. And this can cause some strange situations, like um, this AS here announces some prefix here, and the IXP will re-announce here, and you will re-announce here and here, and vice versa, and you have uh, some routes passing through your AS. This situation is the transit, undesired transit effect when you do not filter anything. So it's very important that you do not uh, go into this situation because uh, of course your bandwidth is not to, to, to deal with this kind of traffic. You are not receiving any money for, for this traffic. Okay? So, uh, it's important that you place the correct filters to avoid this situation. And it's very simple. The only thing we have to do is to announce only the prefix, the network prefix. In fact, it uh, is wrong here, it is 1111, not 1. Uh, only the IP prefix that we, uh, we are announcing, that our prefix, we are uh, we should place an out filter accepting this prefix and discarding all the rest. So, if we put in all our transit and IXP, we put this, these filters and these filters will be uh, avoid that uh, situation of undesired uh, traffic. So, there are filters, good, good practice filters uh, that we can place. And <coughs> ingress filters we can have. Um, usually, it's very important that we discard to receive our own prefix. Because PGP will care about the routes received if the AS path is inside the AS. But PGP will not care. PGP does not know if that prefix that is announced. To, to him is our prefix. And this, this can cause a, a big problem because uh, usually we will have inside our autonomous system a uh, protocol like OSPF whose distance, uh, distance, administration distance is 110. And BGP, eBGP distance is 20. If we learn the two roles with uh, OSPF our internal network and for an external agent uh, sending the, the, that uh, prefix to us, we will install the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, prefix. So uh, it's very important so that, that we discard our own prefix. And uh, there are some networks private networks, reserved networks that are stated in this RFC here. It's very important that we discard and uh, if we are running a full routing, we need to discard, important that we discard also the default route. So, uh, there's a question here. If it's necessary to discard the route that contain our AS number in the AS path. I've seen a lot of uh, configure configuration of PGP that uh, you say to put, I will discard my own AS path. It's not necessary because PGP will care about the situation. That's not, it's not necessary to put this field. If you put, there's no problem to do. So, um, the RFC that uh, states the, the reserve and private networks is listed here. And we construct the filters based on that RFC. And let's see how things are going here.
Okay, this set of, of uh, routing filters are to discard the necessary things. Note that we are using a uh, jump action here to make the things more organ organized. To avoid undesired traffic will be the same, but we need filters now to manipulate the traffic. To manipulate the traffic. Of course, when we are talking about an ISP, we will normally use only the ISP. But if you have different providers, it's probably that we have to to send an amount of traffic for one provider or for another. And so. Uh, <clears throat> repeating that uh, statement that incoming roles can change how we see the external world in, and influencing how we send the traffic and outgoing roles can change how the world sees us. So, when we implement a routing policy to balance traffic, how can we check the results? Um, I've seen some students trying to pin, to trace how trace how being torch bandit are tools that do not tell all the truth. Because trace how only tells us how the uh, back is going and it, it tells us by saying I seem be back. So the back may be may can be low, but you will not receive response, etc. So, the only way to know if our policy is okay is looking in two places. In our routing tables, to see if our upgoing traffic is okay, our upgoing policy. And for downloading, you can look. Uh, a hundred of figures in your router and you will not see if your policy is okay or not. Because you have to look outside your router. You have to look in the looking glasses. You have to look in other routing tables at the world. So, for upload control, we basically can manipulate two attributes. The weight attribute and the local preference. And both we will cause the same effect when we have just one problem. Uh, the default weight is zero, and we will place a weight here of 10. This uh, path will be preferred. Uh, observation weight, weight, <coughs> weight effect is not uh, a PGP attribute. All for GPS good, but in fact it's not because uh, weight is not propagated in the announcements, it's not part of the update message, so weight is not an attribute, but uh, likes a, uh, a local attribute. So the local preference is an attribute that the um, default is 100, and we can place a little preference differently, more than 100, and then this will be the 
we prefer it that. The difference of local preference and weight is that weight is local for one router, and local preference is propagated inside the BNS. So, um, in our case, uh, the natural upload is via the trans tube operator. So, we will we will try to change this uh, to change this by uh, filter and check if it's true that
So, um, for this AS here, this path has two hops, and this path has one hop. So, but this is one gigabit link, and this is 100 meg. So, we want that the traffic goes through this direction. So, in this situation, this AS will send traffic this way. So, the AS path prepared is a way to, it's like to spoof AS uh, fictitious files AS here, and you can uh, prepare uh, some AS here, telling to that AS that this path is worse than this one, and he will receive two two calls here and three calls here, and you send traffic this way. Okay. So uh, comparing the, the three methods, math is efficient but is limited uh, when you have two or more connections. Uh, more specific announcements are very efficient but is a very aggressive uh, way to control downloads because uh, it do not care about how many hops uh, it, the, 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 the longer prefix will match and uh, uh, it's the reason that we can use this with care. Uh, uh, we can use with if we, we have we are certain that we want the most for that link and make the other for the car for example. But in normal cases for balanced traffic, this is not so good to use. And of course, the ASF then is a software resource. It has also limitations because we cannot increase. Uh, a lot of of AS paths. Some ASs in can discard such announcements, and uh, some pods can work today and cannot work tomorrow because the topology of the internet changes, and we, this uh, is the reason that AS path uh, is limited. So. But in our case, we are using uh, uh, ASF to, to bottom, okay? And then, this will be our last filter. We will place uh, a PGP per band and see the results. Of course, in my bottom, I will see nothing, okay? I have, I have to see in other hub. I will see, supposing that my transit provider has a looking glass. I will look. It's half about the table. And you see that he is, he is sending us ritual to the link direct to our AS. But it has another path through the transit tube. You remember the scenario. We have one transit direct, but we have the yeah, transit tube. Of course, we have two paths. And if uh, we choose the direct link. If we don't want this situation, we want that uh, this way will be preferred, all you have to do is to place an AS path, is to announce an AS path to uh, transit one. Okay? Let's see what's happening. change this filter here and I will 
blue. I move. Set the group of ten. Green. Very careful in this, this configuration because one day a check report, one provider, use not the, the number of the, the prefix to be, to be appended, uh, they, but the AS number here. So uh, this caused a, a big problem and the internet in Europe has a big crash because of this, because Cisco has a bug. You look at the internet, you look at Google and you see this, this situation. So very careful here. Here is the number of the If you want to put any AS, you can use this line here. So, in our case, you put the filter, and it's okay. okay. The, 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 the activity will also change to trans feature.
So, uh, we are done with this. And as final consider uh, considerations, um, I think uh, we, these techniques are <coughs> uh, some good practices. Of course, they have to be adapted for some situations. And um, the purpose of this presentation will be orientation of how we are to use the filters. Uh, some slides uh, have some mistakes. I apologize for that, but uh, if anyone is interested, I can give an export file of the, the, the router, the filters, and where they are placed. I can send. Uh, I the moment, I think it's okay. It's uh, working. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. This is my video and uh